Okay, today we're going to do a lab on speed, and as always, you should read the entire lab before we start so you have an idea what's going on, and then you need to read very carefully as we go through. So, for instance, the purpose, to determine and analyze the speed of objects using distance and time. The materials are pretty much here for us already. We've got them. Maddie's got the stopwatch and the ball we're going to use. Set of procedures, it, again, you can read through. There's each person in the group, and usually there's going to be three or four people in the group. Uh, all have a job to do. Someone will hold the track, someone will uh, take care of the object and let it start. Someone's going to time how long it takes the object to go 100 centimeters or one meter, and then we'll have someone recording. In our case, we're going to do all of that, and you will do it at home on your calculations and data sheet as we go through this. Of course, you can stop the tape anytime to get the work in there. Okay, the first procedure says to set the track so that the 100 centimeter mark, which is right here, is 25 centimeters high. find an average and you show your work in the space down below uh, for the speed eventually and make sure you add those three trials and divide by the number three. Next we move the track so that the 100 centimeter mark is at 50. three trials, add them together, divide by three, and you get an average time that goes in the right side. If you, you probably can't see it on the film, but you get the idea. Look at the calculation and data sheet, that top table there. The right side is the average time. We're going to use that to calculate average speed. Now we move the track to 75 centimeters. centimeter height, add those three times together, divide by three, get your average time, put that on the right side of that table. Lastly, now we've got the track set at one meter at the 100 centimeter mark. This is the hardest one, very fast. Ready, Maddie? Yeah. Go. 0.4 seconds. 0.4 seconds. Six seconds. Okay, go. Point four seconds. Point four seconds. Okay. I think the second one was point four two. Yeah. All three trials were point four seconds, but that's why we do trials because this is really tough to get so fast. So I'm actually glad we goofed that up because that's normal. That's how it. That's in real life. Okay. All right. So we've got now. Can you zoom in here a little more? Very good. We've got our data table here, and you've got your times. You're going to add those, divide by three to get your average times. Okay. Now, 
what we're going to do, we can zoom back out again. What you're going to do next is you're going to calculate the average speed. You can't get confused with average time that we just did. That's a mathematical average. When we're calculating average speed, okay, that is a physical term. So average speed by definition is the distance an object travels divided by the time it takes that object to travel. That's called average speed. So you're going to show me the calculations on your calculation sheet in the space that's provided. Do not get caught. It says the height of the track is at 25 centimeters. Don't use 25 centimeters as your distance. The distance the ball traveled in every trial was 100 centimeters or 1 meter. So you can use either 100 centimeters or 1 meter, and you will put in V equals D over T. Then you put in your numbers, like our first number would have been uh, 100 centimeters divided by 1.1 seconds. That was our average time. And we came up with 90.9 centimeters per second. You do all your average speeds the same way. When you finish that, you go to the next part where you're going to calculate the instantaneous speed. That means the speed of the ball when it reached the end of the track. How fast was it going that moment, that instant? So it's called the instantaneous speed. To do that, I've given you the equation here. It's basically instantaneous speed is gravity times the time that it took. Okay? And the times are actually in this chart. We're not using the average time we just did, Maddie and I. Now you're using an average time that's been pre-calculated for you. And You'll plug in the, uh, there's an equation there, so in the space provided on your calculation sheet, you will put V equals 10 meters per second squared, which is gravity, times the time from the chart, like the first one is 0.2 seconds. So you'll put that down here, show the work, and then you'll have your instantaneous speed. Eventually, you're going to do two graphs for me, based on the data. Can you hand me those? You're going to do a graph of the uh, height of the track versus the time it took, and then you're going to do the speed of the ball, the instantaneous speed of the ball versus the height of the track. And that's what these graphs are for. And then there are some conclusion questions, but that's pretty much what you need to know.